South Carolina to be most special to those of us who are fortunate and blessed to know him up close and personal is not just his tremendous contribution to science, but who he is inside. His sense of community, his dedication to humanity, and those less fortunate than himself, and a heart even more tremendous and greater than his incredible accomplishments in space, are what made him a man that I am so proud to know. Let's take a little look at the magical world of Dr. Dean Standing back for touchdown.
it's not a Trojan nation or Bruin nation. Uh, you know, we're all in one family. This is all about the Iranian community. Um, you know, I'm very happy to be here with you. Um, I find it normally easier to talk about the work that we do at JPL as a team than to talk about myself. And, um, but I guess we have to say something about ourselves today. That's what the format is. Uh, but uh, you know, I will get that to, uh, to that uh, in a minute. I'm going to pass on three um, uh, three things to you that you know has made my career special. And surprisingly, uh, it's going to be very similar to what uh, Parisot said uh, to you about what makes you happy, what makes you fulfilled. Uh, I'll share that experience with you. Uh, but let me first tell you about something really neat that we're doing because I think that sort of relates to my first question. Uh, the biggest question right now in space science is that whether, in fact, life, more intelligent, less intelligent, microbial, any form of life, exists anywhere outside of the planet Earth. So that then raises the question, what exactly, how did exactly life arise here on Earth, or else here on Earth, you know, and what was the genesis? And I don't mean genesis in terms of uh, you know, like in a biblical term or a Quranic or religious term, right? So if you go back four billion years ago, when the Earth was about a couple hundred million years old, there was no biology on Earth, right? So if there was a UCLA and if they were offering biology, uh, they could not offer biology because the term wasn't even defined. There was no biology. Chemistry, on the other hand, yes. You know, this was a chemical world with all the uh, you know, uh, matters and molecules tied up in inanimate objects. So the question is, how did we go from a purely chemical world to a biological world, to the first cell uh, without nucleus, and which over the uh, course of four billion years evolved to you, know, you and us being here today in Lloyd's Hall? We actually don't know the answer to that. Right? There are some hypotheses, but there is no solid theory. How did a chemical world on Earth transform to biological? So however that is, the question here is, is, it, you know, uh, is there life outside of Earth? And uh, to uh, talk about that, let me do some numbers for you. The, uh, actually, the, they took that uh, um, uh, picture away. But the, uh, the, the picture that you saw when I walked in, which was a, uh, a spiral galaxy, our Milky Way is sort of some, looks something like that. It's pretty large. It takes about 100,000 years for light to travel from uh, you know, one end to the other end. Uh, and uh, our sun is located something like about 28,000 years, um, light years from the center of the uh, galaxy. Now, our sun is very special. But in that galaxy where we are, there are a hundred billion other suns. Some bigger than ours, some smaller than ours, some burn hotter. But nonetheless, the makeup is the same thing. They're, they're suns. You know, they're just big, small bulk uh, hydrogen gas with the nuclear furnace inside of it. Now, our sun, there's something special about it. The special thing about our sun is that, of course, it has a system of planets going around it. And one of them is very special, right? Earth is not too close to the sun, so all the water would uh, evaporate. It's not too far away, so that all the um, water would freeze over. It's just about the right size with the same, uh, with the just about the right um, uh, gravity to hang on to the atmosphere so you and I have something to breathe. But it's not so big that gathers so much gas that becomes like Jupiter, a gas giant. So what we normally say, we say that Earth is in a Goldilocks zone, right? It's not too hot, not too cold, not too small. It's just right. It's in a habitable zone. And the question here is, is there any other piece of real estate in our galaxy that the conditions are the same as Earth? that it is possible for life to emerge. 